focus this morning on some of the aspects of uh, concussion identification, some of the, um, the qualities of concussion, some of the neuropsychological and neurological issues. We're going to go into some of the issues regarding family dynamics <coughs> and impact testing. And then the afternoon will be spent a lot on the rehabilitation uh, of uh, concussion as well as talking a little bit about what's going on at the state and national level. So uh, we'll go ahead here and let's see here. Here's my presentation. Okay, so this morning I'm going to speak to you about just general concepts of concussion. And as we realize, uh, concussions occur more often than we used to think they did. Uh, young athletes are certainly at risk for this, and uh, the sports that they tend to participate in are often contact, and they're learning skills as they're developing, and uh, oftentimes they, you know, they bump into each other, cause problems, and they can be relatively aggressive. This can all be associated with concussion. Unfortunately, there's much variation in healthcare uh, providers managing of these problems. So, we're really trying to standardize at this time, and it's really hard to study things that aren't managed the same way. We are finding that new and emerging technologies uh, often lead to some evolution in our understanding about concussions, and so we're relying upon some of that data to really modify how we deal with concussions these days. And like most problems that we see, it's really the tip of the iceberg, of course. Uh, many of the reports coming out of the NFL and the NHL uh, give us some idea about what's going on with athletes who've been participating in sports for quite some time. Uh, more commonly though, uh, you know, athletes on the high school level are being subjected to concussions and they're not really uh, being identified or getting the press that other athletes are. So it's really important that <coughs> we do deal with the athletes on this high school level and that's where a lot of our focus is right now. Uh, in fact, in 2008, we, uh, the OSA Medical Advisory Committee uh, really focused on this issue because it had been an international issue that really wasn't being dealt with on the local level. In 2008, we established a statewide management concussion management program, <coughs> which we called OCAMP, and it established a statewide network. And I'll be talking more about this later. But basically, uh, it was a great uh, combination of resource between the medical community and the high school sports community. And in a sense, we've brought in that coalition. Um, we, and then we'll talk a little more about this uh, in the afternoon. But basically, the Oregon plan is focused around three regions, Portland, uh, where we're at the regional consultation here at OHSU, and then in Eugene, the Slocum Orthopedics and Sports Medicine in the center in Bend. And we'll talk a little bit more about this, but basically organizing this around three general geographic areas and then some satellite locations, but really trying to provide some expertise to those in these uh, regions uh, that they may not have in their local communities. So the next question is really what, you know, what is concussion? And, and concussion is any traumatic brain injury uh, that interferes with the normal function of the brain. And of course, um, there can be many things that can alter brain function, but what we're talking about here is really, um, you know, what, what uh, happens if you hit your, hit your brain or have a, like a deceleration or acceleration type injury. And uh, really, it used to be called dings and bell ringers, you know, different things like that, but really, any hit to the head is really a concussion, and whether it's mild or not, we now know that that's a, that can be a significant brain injury. And many people used to think that loss of consciousness was kind of the hallmark of concussion, but now we know that only about 10% of concussions involve loss of consciousness. And some of these things we'll go over on over a little bit just to drive in some of the key points. Um, but th that is one of the key points. <clears throat> Now, how many high school kids really get concussions? Well, there's been a number of studies that looked at this. One uh, study thought that there was probably about 300,000 concussions in uh, high school sports yearly. Uh, th that estimate's gone up and down. We think it may be as much as 10 times that. Uh, some studies report it a little bit lower than that. But typically, it's about 9% of all sports injuries. And if you account for that, it could be anywhere from, uh, say, 700 to 2,000 head injuries in Oregon high school athletes a year. And that depends on participation, of course. And the more that are participating in, in the high-risk sports, the more likely. And uh, you know, as they become pros, the incidence actually goes down. And that's because you know, a lot of times, like a lot of things, that people are kind of more prone to concussions, tend to get them earlier, and then they kind of get weeded out of that sport. So uh, the biggest number of, of kids, people getting concussions, really is in the lower, um, the lower uh, uh, ages. And so here, here's one study of uh, concussion 
risk. And um, there are some newer studies that actually include some uh, lacrosse that then McKeister will include, but I wanted to show you the kind of the basic understanding of this and the newest data he got is from uh, some sources he'll talk about that uh, kind of new data sources. Uh, but here basically it shows that you know, football still by and large of the high school sports, organized sports in most places is still the number one. But in fact, as you can see, soccer and basketball are close second and third. And the other interesting thing on this list is that uh, girls soccer is much higher uh, than boys soccer. And basically that shows us that there's something going on uh, with the female athlete that we don't understand that's really putting them at increased risk for concussion. Certainly it could be uh, because of the neck strength is weaker uh, in female athletes than uh, with males, but it, there are other potential issues that are being studied. And uh, so <clears throat> one might think that the number one cause for concussion in um, soccer players might be heading. Uh, it, it may in fact have something to do with your hairdo, I don't know, but, but in fact it doesn't have to do with heading, it has to do with uh, contact with the upper extremity, elbows, shoulders, going up for a header, hitting somebody else's head, or contact with the ground. So the, the issue of recurrent heading and uh, concussions has pretty much been laid to rest for the most part in terms of being a primary cause of uh, concussion. When we talk about concussion, um, I like to, to group them into these three areas and, and typically physical, emotional, and cognitive as you see in the middle here. Uh, and, but everybody has different intensity, variation in how long it lasts, and uh, you know, different types of symptoms. But typically, the physical symptoms are going to be headache and dizziness, and those are very common physical symptoms that you can, that people speak about. Um, the other are, uh, you know, kind of this emotional, agitated, quiet, or depressed, withdrawn oftentimes. Some of these emotional symptoms don't, don't really come until later. Typically, the physical and the cognitive uh, start fairly early. Some people can't remember, you know, where they're at, what the down is, et cetera, and we'll talk a little bit about um, how to assess that on the field in a minute here.